even now hearing that I'm a victim is very hard. Each word Jessica Steckmuller says cuts like a dagger. When you tell the story of sexual assault, you have to remember what happened. And each time she tells her story brings pain. I was sexually assaulted by a very close friend. I did not understand what had just happened. I actually had to call a friend. I called him within 30 minutes of it happening. And my friend had to just flatly say, Jessica, you were raped. But for Steckmuller, that trauma was made worse by how many times she had to tell her story as she got bounced from one hospital to another. It made me feel like they didn't see it as important. And it made me feel like what had happened to me didn't matter. When it comes to sexual assault, Illinois hospitals fall into two categories, transfer or treatment. Treatment hospitals are able to perform forensic rape kits. Transfer hospitals are not. HSHS St. Mary's Hospital says it switched from treatment to transfer this past August due to staffing shortages, sending patients to its sister hospital in Springfield, St. John's. Steckmuller was one survivor affected by this policy. Brenda Steen was another. You feel like you've lost control. Like Steckmuller, Steen initially showed up at St. Mary's. As a transfer facility, St. Mary's couldn't treat either woman. Instead of being transferred to Decatur Memorial Hospital, a treatment facility only four miles away, they were only offered a transfer to St. John's, more than 40 miles away. My first reaction was, how am I getting there? Oh, well, we'd send you by ambulance. How am I getting back? I don't know. Steen declined the ambulance ride and drove herself to DMH the next day. Steckmuller drove herself to St. John's the morning after she reported as well. Both of them had to once again tell their story and relive the trauma. It's deflating, it's emotionally draining, and it becomes overwhelming in and of itself. Your body starts to react. You start to feel a ball in the pit of your stomach because you don't want to tell the story because you don't want to remember the story. Under Illinois law, IDPH can only approve a request to become a transfer hospital if transferring patients does not unduly burden the sexual assault survivor. The law also states any hospital in a county with less than one million residents and a four-year university cannot be a transfer hospital unless there is another hospital approved for sexual assault treatment in a 20-mile radius of that college. That means St. Mary's can only work as a transfer hospital because DMH is able to accept sexual assault patients for forensic exams. After we press for answers as to why the hospital is sending survivors to another city, St. Mary's issued a statement saying it originally contracted with St. John's because it was within the same health system and would complete the agreement in a timely fashion. Now St. Mary says it's working on establishing a contract with DMH due to several of the same issues raised in this report. The hospital did not say when negotiations began, and as of now, no timeline for that agreement has been established. In a statement, DMH says it accepts all transfers, including sexual assault transfers, no matter if it has a transfer agreement in place or not. Regardless, advocacy groups say more needs to be done to close what they call a loophole in the law. The intent is not for hospitals to transfer only to their network hospitals. The idea is to transfer to the nearest hospital. We respect St. Mary's uh, decision to become a transfer hospital. We just really want them to keep the Decatur rape victims in Decatur. Transfers also make it harder on police departments investigating these crimes. But it just adds another step in there um, that that is a you know can be cumbersome and burdensome on our manpower, which is already tight uh, and limited as it is. But honestly, that's the least of my concerns. I'm really more concerned about the victim. Decatur Police Chief Shane Brandell reports at least five cases have been affected by this policy. And when told St. Mary's could not perform a rape kit, Brandell says one survivor simply declined to file a police report or have a kit done at all. The potential transfer to Springfield 
cost officers the ability to build a rapport with that survivor. That first interaction that law enforcement has with a victim really can set the stage for the rest of the entire investigation. And, and, and part of that, I think, is, is just about the trust. That trust is also critical beyond law enforcement, from the hospital nurses performing the exams to the rape crisis centers providing the long-term support. This is a very hard path to navigate. They are in trauma. We want them to focus on their healing and that's it. Because even after a case is resolved in the legal system, the trauma of the assault and its aftermath remains. How intrusive is that process? Very, absolutely, it's very intrusive because like I said, their body is now a crime scene. A crime scene that tells a painful story like the ones Steen and Steckmuller know all too well. When you've been sexually assaulted, you don't want to believe that you've been sexually assaulted. When you've been sexually assaulted, you don't want to talk about being sexually assaulted. To sit in a car for 45 minutes and think, I'm going to tell my story to these people, I'm going to get a rape kit done, and then I'm going to talk to the police. That's a lot to think. When all you want to do is go home, shower, and forget that it had happened. Indicator Darren Mullen, WAND News.